Welcome to this article on the user interface. I'm sure you'll devise your preferred layout. In this video, I'll explain the logic I use to place the toolbars around the work area and how to hide and display them when required. Beginning at the top, in the title bar, the software is identified along with the version, in this case, designing, and the name of the file on display with the machine format. Notice, as I select each tab, some of this information will change. The main menu resides along the top of the work area and all menus can be accessed from here. The toolbars are displayed from the window menu. You can see I have the following toolbars open. Color, Docker, Fill Stitch Types, Graphics Digitizing, Mode, Outline Stitch Types, Prompt Bar, Status, Toolbox, traditional digitizing, travel, and the view toolbar. These toolbars can be moved to any part of the surrounds of the work area, to the work area itself, or indeed to another monitor, by using the handles of each toolbar. These are the dots at the top or left hand end of the toolbar, depending on the orientation. Or if parked on the work area itself, the head of the toolbar is the handle. In any case, pass the mouse over the handles until you see the four-pointed arrow. Hold down the primary mouse button and drag to the desired location. The layout you see here is my preference, displaying only those toolbars that I use most often. This will change depending on the design I'm working on, but I like to keep the work area as uncluttered as possible. Basically, I keep my main toolbox, digitizing tools and travel toolbar to the left as they are in constant use. The fills and outline toolbars and other effects along the top. I keep the docker toolbar top right as it controls the flyouts which reside under and to the right of the work area. My object properties displays the properties of the object selected. If you make a selection and no properties are displayed, then it will be because the objects have been grouped or branched and there is more than one property in the group. The color object list is the roadmap to the design and displays the order of stitching. The first stitched at the top of the list. These property boxes will fly away if the pin at the top is depressed and can be reinstated by passing the mouse over the tab and selecting the pin again to make it face downwards. The X will close the box and it must be reopened from the Docker toolbar. Along the bottom is the color palette with all of its features. And the shortcut icon to the background and display colors. Below that, the status bar and once a tool is selected, the prompt bar. I will go into detail of each of these toolbars and property boxes and other features in the appropriate lessons. For now, familiarize yourself with the workplace layout and remember the window menu hides the toolbars. Here's a big tip, right click in the toolbar area to display the toolbars. Thanks for watching and see you in the next article.